I stand before the throne, the accuser of the brethren starts to read the things I've done as I hear. fills my mind. Why should I not be put in hell to suffer for all time? It's through Bible tells us in Leviticus, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And it says, I have, I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Amen. And I'm thankful. Thankful that he was willing to give his blood. 
Mine wasn't sufficient. Mine wasn't good enough. Uh, the, the blood of an animal wasn't no longer sufficient. Uh, but God's own son, the sinless lamb, was willing to, to take the beating and to take the scars and the marks. And he said, I bear in my body. Amen. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful that he would see fit to think enough of me to do that for me. Amen. He loved me that much. So I'm so thankful for that. I, you know, a lot of a lot of religions around the world today, um, they're not a they're not a bloody religion, um, unless there's some kind of radical, um, radical you know, religion that 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 causes bloodshed on on other people. But but our God shed His blood for us. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. Let's turn to Matthew chapter number 18. Matthew chapter number 18. I'm glad to have you back with us tonight. I'm going to have to work on the rest of this bunch getting them back on Sunday night. I don't know where Brother Jeremy is, but amen. I'm going to get him. I called him. He didn't answer. I texted him. He didn't answer. You know, I sent a search party to his house, I guess. Uh, yes, uh, Miss Kendra uh, and Brother Douglas are both very sick, very sick. I think Brother Douglas is at the hospital having a lot of stomach pain. And Miss Kendra's been very sick. And also, uh, Brother Jason Craig is very sick. He's got bronchitis. And the Leesers are all sick. And uh, I'm sure I'm missing some because we... That's right. Brother Scott's mom had a stroke this this morning, yesterday. Yeah, okay. Well, she's in the hospital, so they went up there uh, to see her. Uh, so a lot of lot going on. So y'all pray, pray for your church family. Amen. Amen. We ought to pray for pray for one another, and be faithful in doing that. All right. <clears throat> Let's turn to Matthew chapter number eighteen tonight. Is everybody there? Amen. All right. I need y'all to stay with me for a little bit, a little minute tonight. All right. Just uh, if you need to stand up where you are, stand up. You ain't gonna hurt my feelings. Amen. I'd rather you do that than fall asleep on me. All right. Matthew eighteen twenty one. <clears throat> the Bible says, then came Peter to him and uh, and said, Lord. And the, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how. How often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? And he said, Till seven times. Jesus saith unto him, I say unto thee, Until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened, uh, therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. And I want to look at these verses right here, this twenty. 1 and 22, uh, Peter is talking to the Lord and he's asking him this simple question, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? He said, how many times, Lord, do we uh, essentially, and if, and if you know Peter, if you know his personality, he's pretty much saying, how many times are you going to let them just run all over me, Lord? I mean, I was, that was Peter. He's P Peter's saying, Lord, how... How, how many times will I just let them keep doing what they're doing before I say something? Because Peter was a very vocal uh, disciple. He was a very vocal uh, person. He, he always had something to say. And, he, and he, most of the time had a little bit of attitude when he said it. Uh, he, he would even so much as mouth off to the Lord Jesus. <laughs> and, and the Lord have to correct him where he was. And, and, uh, and so... We see here once again. He's asking him, Lord, uh, I, I, when it comes to the when it comes to the subject or matter of me forgiving another person, Lord, how many times? And he even throws this in here: How often shall my brother sin against a uh, sin against me? So we see there, Peter's already he's taking it personal, and which is what he did many many times. 
He, he said, how many times are they going to sin against me, Lord? And then he said, well, how, I want you to forgive them seven times. But not only that, I want you to forgive them seven times 70, as if to say, uh, I don't want you to stop forgiving them. There doesn't need to be a time or a certain amount of, 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 uh, of them having to come to you and beg and plead for your forgiveness before you forgive them. Amen? And that's what I want to kind of talk about tonight is uh, just simply that we need to forgive. Amen. We need to forgive. As Christians, we need to learn how to forgive our brother and our sisters. Amen. Listen, I'm, and I'm not here to tell you uh, tonight that you, have to, uh, that you have to condone what they're doing. Amen. My wife has always taught our kids that, you know, if our children do something wrong to the other, if Bo says to his sister, I'm sorry, she doesn't have to say to him, it's okay, Bo. Because what he did was not okay. But instead, rather, she does need to say, Bo, I forgive you. Y- y'all getting what I'm saying? You don't have to be okay with what somebody does to you. You don't have to be okay with abuse. You don't have to be okay with any kind of neglect or any kind of abuse or any kind of sin that's committed towards you but you we do have to learn to get to the place where we are able to for, learn to try to forgive people for the wrongdoings that they've committed to you now I know that sometimes it's a process and I know that sometimes it's going to take longer uh, for you than it is for me or maybe for me than it is for you but we still need to be working on and trying to learn how to forgive I can, I'm in here to tell you tonight that listen to me I know for a fact uh, that, that, that it, it is hard it is hard to forgive people that have committed uh, abuse towards you it's hard to forgive people who have who have uh, wronged you maybe uh, personally to your body or maybe uh, some kind of abuse and things like that. I'm not here to say tonight that we, uh, to overlook or to downplay or diminish those things, and those are very real things. And I'm not here to tell you to go to that person and say, hey, uh, everything's okay, because everything's not okay. I, I understand that. But we do have to learn to get to a place, if, if we want to have some kind of peace in our life, To learn how to forgive them. Because if we don't learn how to forgive and move on, uh, then uh, that root of bitterness and that root of anger begins to build and and, and take hold in our heart. And if we're not careful, that will be the only thing that consumes our mind and consumes our heart and consumes us in every aspect of our life. And it, begin, it becomes harder and harder then to move on. It becomes much harder to move on. So really what he's saying here is, Lord, to what end do we forgive somebody? Is what Peter's saying. And the Lord responds, really, there is no end. You just keep forgiving. Now, there is a process of restoration. There's a process of, of how uh, somebody, and I'm not going to get into all that tonight. If there's a, maybe a pastor or a preacher who does something wrong, uh, immoral to the church or something like that, forgiveness can be given. But, but forgiveness doesn't always mean restoration uh, into a position. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? If a pastor, if a pastor or a preacher does wrong, then to forgive them is one thing, but maybe saying, okay, you can have your position back doesn't mean it doesn't mean that's not forgiveness, is what I'm trying to say. Maybe you've got a, a family member who's a, uh, who has abused you in some type of way. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you have to allow them to be in that same position that they had in your life before. Does that make sense? For you to, you don't have to say, okay, everything's like it was and we're good to go. 
No, because the damage is done, and I understand that. The marks have been made. The scars have been made. The mental scars, the physical scars, those things are done, and they'll never go away, and it's always going to happen. It's always going to be in the back of your mind, and I'm not asking you, and the Lord's not asking you to look at that person and to say, okay, so-and-so, everything's good as it always was. I forgive you. No. But he does want us to learn to forgive. Amen. When, when should we forgive? How? Let's look at Luke. Now this is what really got me today. Are y'all with me? Brother Jeremy's not with me. He's at home. Luke chapter 23, verse number 34. Let's back up here. I could read the whole chapter, but this chapter is, is, is speaking of the Lord being crucified, going to Calvary. We do know that in Scripture, in the book of Matthew, it teaches and t- t- tells us in, in all of the Gospels, that the Lord Jesus Christ was taken from his disciples. He was taken from the garden and he was led into a common place. And after multiple times of going back and forth with with Pilate about whether or not they should crucify him, he orders to have him beaten. And they, he, they take him into the common place and they begin to, to beat him. Listen to me. They begin to beat him to, uh, to an unrecognizable human body. Uh, his bones were exposed. His insides were exposed. He was, he was spit on. Bible says that the beard was plucked from his face. They took the crown of thorns and they plated it on his head and they 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 took a reed or a stick, the Bible says, and they they pushed that crown of thorns down into his skull. And they beat him and they embarrassed him. They stripped him from his clothes. They embarrassed him, they beat him, they mocked him, they made fun of him. They led him away to Calvary and they put nails in his hands and in his feet. They did this in front of his friends, they did this in front of his family. They did this in public where everybody could see. And one at a time they would come by and they would mock and they would make fun and they would spit on him and they would ridicule him. And what does the Bible tell us he says? Now, I don't know about you, but if that were me, or if that were my boy, I'd be raining some fire. Amen? The first words out of my mouth would have been, all right, God, you know, let's, this is it. This ain't happening to my son. Where's where's the fire? I'd have been I'd have been like the kid with the magnifying glass with the ants, you know, and the sun. You all know what I'm talking about? Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. We'd have been burning some ants, you know. It would have been that would have been it. That would have been it. But the first words that he spoke of were this. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And then they go on to begin to ridicule him even more. His words were, Father, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. 
So how should we forgive? We should forgive like Christ forgives. With no limitations. Amen. And I know that's hard. You say, Brother Jesse, I, I, how, do you, how do you do that? Do you, you know, what do you know about forgiveness? A little bit. Well, you don't know what she did to me. You don't know what he did to me. Yeah, but I'm, I'm here to tell you that, that the Lord, Jesus Christ himself, took on all the sins of the world. Even the ones that you speak of, even the ones right now in your mind that somebody did to you, he took that sin upon himself and he found it within himself to forgive. We have, a, we have a major problem in our churches today when it comes to the matter of forgiveness. Unfortunately, we don't know how to forgive. We, we do know how to hold grudges. We're good at that. We know how to hold it against somebody. We know how to bring it up. We know how to Facebook it. Amen. We know how to immediately run to a Facebook post and post it. We know how to immediately when we have an all when when we have when we have something to say or something against another brother or sister in Christ, we know how to pick up a phone and call uh, another person and talk to them about the problem. But we have yet to learn to figure out how to go to another person and work it out and forgive them and allow them to forgive you and move on. We haven't we can't master that. But we're so good at getting mad and going to the church down the road and talking about that preacher because he, he, he did you hear what he said? Do you hear what do you hear what his wife do you, she don't even do this or she don't even talk to me or that preacher did this or that preacher instead of going to another brother or sister and working it out which is exactly what he wants us to do Now I do understand that things happen and there's some things you just can't work past But did you try to get to the bottom of it with each other and, and at least, at least get to the point where you shake hands and say, agree to disagree, I forgive you. Now let's go our separate ways. You know, I have preacher friends right now that we don't see eye to eye. We don't agree on a lot of things. Whether they be on the more left side or more right side. I've got some over here on the far right, but they're harsh and they're mean and they're hateful. I love them. We don't agree on everything. And I've got guys over here. And there's things that's been said and Man, they've said things about me and I've said things about them and we but you know what we got to do? We got to meet in the middle and just say, "Look, I forgive you. You for, you know, let's move on." It's hard, I understand. I'm one, brother Shannon, I'm one. That I wanna, I wanna go to somebody and I wanna tell them what for, real quick. And unfortunately, I've done that <laughs> before, a few times. It didn't always work out like I wanted it to. And most of the time, when I go and I let them have it, brother Jim, most of the time after it's over, I'm standing there thinking, why was I such an idiot? Why, why did I say that? Why did I do that? You know, 
know, I, I said something this morning to the teenagers. It was this. We've got to learn. We've got to learn to just stay in our lane. Amen. If we would get to that place where we figure out, listen to me. Stay in your lane. Worry about you. Worry about your family. Worry about your kids. Worry about you. I think we'd be much better off. You got to learn to forgive like Christ forgives. Amen. Y'all with me? A couple of you. All two of you. Ephesians chapter 4. Why should we forgive? Here it is. Verse 32. And be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted. What's that word? Come on guys. Forgiving one another. Even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Why do we forgive? Because he forgave us. And I, I'm pretty sure, I don't know about you, I can't find it in scripture anywhere where he puts any guidelines on his forgiveness. He doesn't say on Calvary, and he doesn't say in the Gospels, Brother Mac, it's nowhere in scripture that I can find. Yeah, I'll forgive you, but if only or if you do this. If you don't do this. There's stipulations. There's guidelines. There's going to be some, there's going to be some, uh, uh, some hoops you have to jump through. There's going to be a couple things I need you to, some contracts I need you to sign before I forgive you. But you know what he did? He forgave. And he tells us to be kind tender-hearted, forgiving. A little bit ago, I heard these girls coming upstairs, Brother Mac, and they was going at it. You know, sisters. Where's Madison at? They was just going at it. They came through the door. I said, girls, be sweet. Just be sweet. Be kind to each other. And of course, it was, yeah, but she and, you know, she... Kindness goes a long ways. Forgiveness goes a long ways. And I think that maybe some of us in here tonight, some of us in here tonight have a place in our heart that we need to find some forgiveness for some people. Some stuff you've been carrying around. Some stuff that you've been holding on to. Some things that you're mad about. Some things that you need help with. That you need to go to the Lord and, and ask for forgiveness. Usually about after every service I have to ask the Lord to forgive me. Amen. Lord forgive me. For the thoughts that I thought. My anger, my temper. We've got to get to the place where we learn to forgive. Amen. And uh, be kind. Let's all stand. Dylan, if you would come. I think I got all of you, all out of you I can get. You go home and take a nap now. Amen. Some of you shouldn't need to go home and take a nap. You just took a good one. Amen. bowed and eyes closed we give invitation tonight maybe there's something in your heart the Lord's dealt with your heart maybe somewhere about forgiveness somebody you need to forgive somehow maybe there's
there's somebody that's something you've been holding on to for a long time. If I call his name one day and the heavens above just opened up and I heard my Savior say, I'm through patching it up, I'm through giving you love, though your world is torn. been here for 14 years he told me right brother Nathan and uh, 
came to me the other day he said you know I don't think I've ever officially joined our church and uh, so he said he wanted to make sure it's official and so I forgot to do it this morning uh, but I think there's enough of us here to do it tonight and uh, in, in any way I think he's about grandfathered in I mean 14 years so uh, brother Nathan you have anything you'd like to say before we got a testimony and one day I'd like for him to share it with us but uh, it's a big deal that he's come and, and, and uh, said he wanted to join our church and it means a lot to me it means a lot to me and I won't get into it but that he would be willing to say that I'm his pastor means a lot to me so anyways, all in favor of Brother Nathan joining our church, say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right. Let's do this. Uh, is there a plate down there? Somebody get me a plate real quick. There is one. All right, let's do this. Let's come by and shake Brother Nathan's hand. And as you do that, if you have J dollars, just drop them in the, drop them in the plate, okay? Amen. All right, y'all come. Shake Brother Nathan's hand. Let him know you're glad that he joined our church. 